casting it for your next level for what is written. What is written is written, but a man had to sign it. But in your destiny, there is a man God put that will execute it. I came as that man. Take your Bible. We are looking at this morning. We are looking at something very interesting this morning. From thanksgiving to thanks living. From thanksgiving to thanks living. We want to live a life of thanksgiving. We want to move beyond thanksgiving to thanks living. It becomes part of our life. Because the kingdom arts and the kingdom culture is thanks living. The kingdom arts and the kingdom culture is what? Thanksgiving. Amen. I just want you to take the next few seconds as we go to check out how faithful God has been to you. Is he not faithful? All right, be seated, be seated, be seated. Let's see Psalm 92 and verse 1. And two, Psalm 92, verse 1 and verse 2. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name, O Mosiah. So it is the art of the kingdom. It's a culture of the kingdom. It's a good thing to give thanks to the Lord. That means it's a bad thing not to give thanks unto the Lord. Somebody shout amen. From thanksgiving to thanks living. Thanksgiving is an art. Thanksgiving is a culture. God is calling his church to start with thanksgiving, but gratitude to thanksgiving. That is, what, what, what do I mean by this? Thanksgiving now becomes a perpetual culture, an atmosphere to live in. Our every life pursuit with daily gratitude like David David moved from thanksgiving to thanksgiving and hear what he said the other day in Psalm 34 verse 1 I will bless the Lord at all times I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise will continually be in our mouth at all times that means this man has graduated from thanksgiving to thanksgiving. You are come, you are entering into thanksgiving from today. Amen. Where everything about you depicts the culture of the kingdom, the act of the kingdom. However, we must start with a revelatory understanding and deep inspiration of thanksgiving. The secret power of God. I want to use the leper, the lonely leper, or the leper that returned to give thanks. I want to use it briefly as a case study as we go forward today. So thanksgiving is a major trigger to divine power. You want to see the power of God, learn how to give thanks. Begin to give thanks. Psalm 22 and verse 3, it says, For the Lord God dwells in the praise of his people. Where there is thanksgiving, there will be God always. Why do we need to do thanksgiving service? Why do we need to do thanksgiving service? Why thanksgiving service? Because where a thing is not defined, abuse is inevitable. There will be misunderstandings, there will be misrepresentation. And that's why we are painstakingly taking our time from the place of prayer and study and by the bright and instruction of this Holy Spirit to do this. Why not quietly thank God in your heart? After all, God sees your heart. Some people might say, why not quietly thank him? After all, God sees your heart. But Psalm 34 verse 3, he said, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Magnify is to make an object large. 
Is that not what your dictionary says? Yes, to magnify is to make an object large. large. So when we say let us magnify God, it's not a thing of the heart. It's to make him known to the nations of the earth. To say this God is the only God we know. And this God is a powerful and a faithful God. Somebody shout amen. Amen. Two ways to magnify objects. Number one is through microscope. A microscope makes a tiny object to look bigger than it actually is. Is that correct? So God is not calling us to microscope him. No. We really cannot make God any bigger than he is. He is the one that filleth all in all. Correct? There is nothing we can do to make God bigger or more powerful. He's already too powerful. In fact, he does not need us to be powerful. It is for our own help that we should give him thanks. Yes, sir. When we say we give our life to Jesus, we don't really have any life to give to him. Because how do we give, to, how do we give our life to the one who gave us the life? We, do, we don't really have anything to give him. Is anybody hearing me? Yes, sir. We don't have anything to give him. Even the entire world cannot contain him. It is politicians that engage praise singers to magnify or rather microscope them. Is that correct? When you go to certain gathering, you see praise singers singing about politicians, calling them all kind of names. Baba, Baba, this and that and all of that. Because they need people to sing their praise because they know they are not really doing well. Somebody shout amen. Amen. Because they microscope them, they tell lies about them, and exaggerate their achievements. But we are not gathered here today to microscope God. No. We are to magnify him and to, tell, and to say it the way it is. The second thing, telescope. Telescope is a device shaped like a long tube that you look through in order to see things that are far away. You know, you know it. Telescope. You use it to look and things that are far, they, it, it can draw it nearer for you to see how the thing really is. You are able to use it to see things that are far, far, far away. A telescope brings far objects into proper view so we can see the object exactly the way that they are. So Thanksgiving is telescoping God. It is the opportunity that we have to gather people to see our God exactly as he is. When we say he's a deliverer, he's a deliverer. When we say he's a provider, he's a provider. When we say he's the king of kings, he is truly the king of kings. When we say he's our helper, he's truly our helper. What have you that was not given to you. When we say it's our deliverer, check it out. David said the other day, if not for the Lord who is on our side, we had testimonies this morning. Deliverance from death, escape from death. Psalm 68 verse 20, it says, escape from death, belong get unto God. We had one of us testifying this morning how she entered into a vehicle not knowing it was one chance. And they turned out to be kidnappers. And they began to oppress her. They would have killed her. But somehow, God showed up. Oh, yes. And the battle turned. During the week, a pastor in Abuja, Pastor Kelvin, my, one of my sons, called me and said, Papa, please, I need you to pray. I said, why? He said, two of his brothers I think, and two of his cousins were kidnapped. Whether they were going for burial or coming for burial or something, they were kidnapped. I said, let us pray. As I began to pray, I spoke in tongues with him for about 15 minutes on phone. And I said, by the God I serve, they will let them go within seven days. As I was rounding up my midnight prayer this morning, 
I saw his call. I was still praying. Then he sent a message. He said, Papa, after service, I know you are praying. I will call you. Your God is powerful. Do you know, according to your word, last night at midnight, they released my two brothers and my two cousins. Just somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when we say it's powerful, it's really powerful. Oh, yes. When we say it's our deliverer, he's truly our deliverer. Yes, sir. When we say it's our helper, he's truly our helper. Oh, yes. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. We, we magnify him as the one who has done what he says he will do. As the one who alone works wonders. Is it not true? Let's look at Bi Biblical Thanksgiving. Biblical Thanksgiving is a telescope, not a microscope. Biblical Thanksgiving is a telescope. Saying God, when we say he's great, he's truly great. When we say he's powerful, he's truly, he's truly powerful. We are thanking him and seeing him for who he is. Somebody shout amen. Amen. Third thing I put down here, I want you to see. Through our testimony... Through the reason for which we are gathered, we bring God, the power of God, close to people to see and give them an opportunity to taste with us and see that God is good. So every time God helps somebody, delivers somebody, blesses somebody, heals somebody, delivers you, defends you, if you don't testify, you are only sabotaging yourself and you are hiding the glory of God that others should benefit from. And that's why I define testimony. I say testimony is a thanksgiving openly addressed to God. Testimony is a thanksgiving openly addressed to God. Every time you testify, you are openly saying and declaring this God is powerful. And people who don't testify might not see the next level of God. If you have not thanked him for the last, you are not qualified for the next. You didn't hear me now. If you have not thanked him for the last, you are not qualified for the next. Somebody shout a big amen. Amen. Fourthly, the desire to not publicly testify is a, is a planting of Satan. I repeat again. The desire not to publicly testify is a planting of Satan. Satan will do anything to shut up the mouth of people from testifying about the miracles of Jesus. Let people believe and be saved. Now look, remember the story of the man at Gadara. There are some of you sitting down here today. God has helped you again and again. But once you have never come to this altar to testify, the day Satan uses it against you, you might come into a problem. You say, ah, but where is God? But God has been showing himself up. You have never one day stood on this altar to testify. Be careful and be well. It doesn't matter who you are. Jesus healed a man. The man of Gadara. And remember the man said, Jesus, let me follow you. Jesus said, no, don't follow me. He said, go and show yourself to the people and your family. Tell them how much the Lord has done for you. Go and show yourself to the people, to your family. That means go and make it public. Go and let them know how much the Lord has done for you. If you have not been able to tell people how much the Lord has done for you, you might not be qualified for next. So be very careful when you conceal your testimony, when you don't share it. Don't do private testimonies anymore. Come openly to testify. Come openly to magnify. Oh, yes. Somebody shout amen. Amen. He did it with the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Remember in Matthew chapter 28? Please, let's have it displayed on the screen. Let's see from verse 12 to 13. And when they were assembled with the elders and had taken counsel, they gave large money unto the soldiers. 13, saying, say ye, 
His disciples came by night and stole him away while we slept. So the testimony we refuse to give, the enemy start using it as propaganda. Somebody shout amen. Amen. Now this is the enemy paying people to go and testify, to go and lie. Probably paying social media to misrepresent about the working of Jesus. It did not start today. Somebody shout a big amen. Amen. But for, let's see from the New Living Translation so we can get more uh, proper understanding. A meeting with the elders was called and they decided to give the soldiers a large bribe. They told the soldiers, you must say, Jesus' disciples came during the night while we were sleeping and they stole his body. <laughs> Propaganda did not start today. At all. Now imagine this story. They carry it, they go to publish it, they go to social media. Imagine the misrepresentation. It did not start today. Oh, yes. So not everything you see or hear or read is true. It is propaganda against the kingdom. Jesus said, I will build my church and the gate of hell shall not prevail. That means, by all means, that means uh, there is every tendency that the gate of hell will want to prevail. But thank God Jesus is the one building the church. Yes. Thank God the Holy Ghost is the one in charge of the church. Oh, yes. And any church that truly belongs to Jesus, the gate of hell shall not prevail. But let's see this. They had a serious meeting. Uh, serious meeting. They had a serious meeting and they gave bribe. Uh, and they said, go and lie. Let's, let's see it again now. Let's see it again. Verse 12. They gave them big amount of money, millions of naira, campaign of, to launch campaign of calumny. Watch this. It said, a meeting with the elders was called and they decided to give bribe to the soldiers, a large bribe. Large one. That means, more, imagine, imagine the soldier, a soldier that for 30 years of his life, the salary he cannot receive. They gave him 100 years salary. Ah. <laughs> imagine uh, a soldier, for example, whose salary is 200,000 naira. Mm. And they call the soldier, 10 of them, they say, we give you 1 billion. Ah, 100 million. <laughs> hallelujah. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I want you to know that campaign of calumny did not start today. People, the devil can go any length, extra mile. But the gate of hell shall not prevail. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. They gave the soldiers large bribe to not tell the truth of the resurrection. So every time you see misrepresentation, there is a campaign behind it. Yes, sir. There is an agenda about it. Oh, yes. When you see they are talking about somebody again and again, don't just believe what they are saying. Investigate personally on your own. Ah. You will find out a lot of lies. And you will find out the truth. Yes, now this is Jesus now. No wife. He doesn't have a wife that somebody will say, oh, is the, maybe it's the lady I wanted to marry that Jesus married. <laughs> or somebody will say, ah, a lady will say, oh, he disappointed me. There was nothing like that. He was not a politician. He was not into any business. He was not after anybody's farm or anything. Yet, they raise a campaign of calumny. You have to see how these things work. In Revelation chapter 12 and verse 11, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimonies, and they loved not their lives unto death. So God is willing to give anybody a miracle who will decide to tell the word about his power and goodness. Now people are paying to go give testimonies that don't, that, that don't exist. But we have living proof, testimonies of what God is doing. And we cannot say it. It's a big error. It's a satanic implantation. Oh, yes. It's a satanic manipulation. Oh, yes. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. That is why I said the other day 
that ingratitude is worse than a snake bite. Somebody shout amen. Amen. Ingratitude is worse than a snake bite. You know snake. When snake, you know snake, people can die from snake bites. So as as bad as snake bite, as dangerous as snake bite is, though not for everybody. Not for me. <laughs> and not for you. Amen. You will take up serpent and scorpion. Ah. They shall by no means harm you. I'm not encouraging you. I'm leaving it. Yes, sir. When he says no weapon formed against you that will prosper, it's true. Ah. I'm a living proof. When you see me dance to God and thank God the way I do, if you want to clap, better do so. Are you sure you are in the church this morning? Yes, sir. Amen. Because I've seen death face to face, near death experience. Not once, not twice, many times. But I say, I will, I will praise the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise will continually be in my mouth. Where the men of underworld were shooting sporadically as if, as if we were in war zone. And yet, a single bullet did not penetrate. So when he says no weapon form, against us will prosper. It's true. Yes, sir. So, if snake bite is, is dangerous, and I'm saying ingratitude is worse than snake bites, that's how God sees it. Somebody shout amen. Amen. I can't hear your amen. Amen. Thanksgiving and testimony is telescoping God. There are but four epic accounts in the Bible that instructs us on the beauty of and patterns of thanksgiving. We are going to look at it briefly. Number one, the lonely leper. You remember the case of the lonely leper? Yes, sir. Among ten, he was the only one that returned back. Number two, remember the little lad, the little boy that gave up his lunch for God to use and feed the multitude. Remember that? You remember that little boy? Yes, sir. He gave it a loaf of bread to Jesus. The third one is the murmuring multitude. The evil of not thanking God. The fourth one, the grateful prostitute. She broke her alabaster oil. She broke her alabaster oil. Let's look at the lonely leper. Luke chapter 17 and verse 11. Luke 17 and verse 11. Are we there? And it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Go ahead. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers which stood afar off. Thirteen. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Pardon. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go, show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. With a loud voice did what? Glorified God. And fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. In other words, he was a stranger, but yet he still came to give thanks. Ten men who had leprosy met him. When we talk about this in the time of, ge in the time of geography, how many of us study the maps on our Bible? You know, if you have the New King James Version or different Bible, there are maps. How many of you come and talk to me? You just open the Bible, you read the one, or on Sunday when they say open, that's when you open. Have you ever studied those maps? They are talking about a lot of things. It can show you locations and stories. It can depict things. It can help you to get into some Bible commentaries where some things were, you know, where, where they, were, they lighted on some things and you can see it differently. Somebody shout amen. Amen. 
I know many of you have never studied that map. The map, if you look at the map, Jerusalem is on the southern part of the map. Judea, a city of Jerusalem, is in the south. Then the B of it, Samaria is in the middle. Let's see, the north, Galilee is in the north. Jesus traveling on the border, there he met ten lepers. Nine of those lepers were Jewish people. And one was a Samaritan. So when we look at historical relevance, when we look at the historical relevance, I want you to take this important note, then I'll begin to explain. The Samaritans were mixed blood. If we are to look at the historical relevance of the scripture, the Samaritans were mixed blood. The Ninevites, part of Assyria at a time, had conquered Israel and occupied the northern part called Galilee. The, north, the northern, northern part called Galilee. So they occupied the north and allowed, allowed another nation and race to join them in Israel. So over time, they began to intermarry one another. Through conquest, Israelite women produce children with mixed blood and a new race are formed. And that new race is the Samaritan. The mixture of the Ninevites when they, con the Nineveh, when they conquered Israel and at the time they start intermarrying with the people of Israel and by the reason of that a new race came forth and that race is what is recognized today as the Samaritans or in the Bible. Can somebody say amen? Amen. So next time when you see the map in your Bible, study it. Tell your neighbor, say study it. Study it. So thus Samaritans were seen and regarded as inferior people. So they were seen and regarded as inferior people. Much more, Jews saw them as cursed people. Why did the Jews see them as cursed people? Because God had warned the people of Israel never to intermarry with those people. Because of his dire consequences, what will come as a result of that? But when you are conquered, a con at that time Israel was a conquered territory. So they have no right to work by the reason of their own constitution or traditional beliefs or culture, they have to work with the new government imposed on them. So by the reason of that, that law was broken. The Nineveh and the people of Israel, they began to intermarry. And as a result of that, the Jewish people did not want to reckon with them. They said, these ones are inferior people. So on account of that, they are called the Samaritans. Somebody shout, Amen. Amen. So they are seen as cursed people because they believe that those women that married those men from Nineveh that they disobeyed God and on account of that they are perceived or seen as a as cursed people because it, it looks like disobedience is anybody hearing me yes sir. somebody say talk to me talk to me papa so totally I want you to see this Samaritan was the commercial and capital city of Galilee Samaria or Samaritan was the capital and commercial city of Galilee just for example in Nigeria in Nigeria today, Lagos is the commercial capital, the economical capital of Nigeria. I hope you are aware. Yes, sir. When you go to the eastern part, Onitsha is in the capital and the commercial city of the whole of the east. Then from there you hear a place like Newi. If you go, it's like that again and again. So, Samaritan, this Samaria, they were the commercial capital as at that time. I'm giving you this so that you can understand the thanksgiving of this man. Somebody shout amen. Amen. So they are the commercial capital and capital city of Galilee. And this was where the Assyrians and other nations dwell. Let's see, let's look at the, 
the racial prejudice quickly. Israelites abhorred the Samaritans and are strongly racially prejudiced against them because they viewed them as inferior blood. So this racist thing did not start from today. Yes, sir. So they consider them inferior people. Like those who think they are white people, we say we, say we are black monkeys. That's crazy. Somebody shout amen. Hate man. So this racist thing, I'm showing you from the Bible time where it started. So as a result of that, they were considered, so there were racial flaws, different things coming together as at that time against those people. Because they viewed them as inferior blood. So Jesus encounter with the woman at the well in John reveals the extent of this prejudice. Remember, if you read John chapter 4, if you read from verse 1, then you will hear Jesus said, I must necessarily go through Samaria. So going through Samaria was a necessity because there are errors that started that Jesus needed to correct. Ah. Even when Jesus was at the well, you will see the woman and say, we don't have anything with you people. Is yes, that sir. correct? Yes, sir. So there was still that inferiority even up to the time of Jesus. Ah. Let's go further a little bit. So Jesus encountered with the woman at the well in John reveals the extent of this prejudice. John 4 verse 9. Let's, let's have this display on the screen. Then see the woman of Samaria unto him, how is, it that, how is it that thou, being a Jew, ask a drink of me? Can you see that? Yes, sir. Then see the woman of Samaria, how unto him, how is it that thou, being a Jew, ask a drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Because you see, he said, how can I? We are considered inferior. We don't have dealings on account of that because we are seen as inferior people. So it could be what, out of ignorance in the days of our forefathers, they call certain people, they say, these ones are Osu people. Yes. In other words, in English, outcast. Yes, sir. So I think that's the better definition. So this book we are considered an outcast. And they will tell you, even today, and you will be surprised, some Christians, even our, some of our parents, they will tell you, don't marry that girl. They are also people. Yes, sir. That's an insult to the death of Jesus on the cross of Calvary. Ah. For you as a person to be saying that this one is also, he said, Jesus died for all, whether Jews or Gentiles. So by the blood of Jesus on the cross of Calvary, yes. the transaction was finished. He hung on the tree. He said, cause be he that hung on the tree. According to Galatians 3, 13 and 14. When he hanged on the tree, when he was hung on the tree, on account of that, that was reversed. So we can excuse this for now. Because as at that time, Jesus has not already, Jesus has not, was not yet gone or has not gone to sacrifice himself on the Calvary tree. So, permit that this one can still work. But when you see, oh, you see a Christian, you hear many people, you ask your mother or your father or that person, why do you say we will not marry? Are there some of you, your parents told you don't marry from certain place? Talk to me now. Huh? They say, oh, don't, that tribe don't marry. Sometimes it's because of one encounter they have. And what is the encounter? The time I was working in train station, that man from that place, he dealt with me. And on that count, I vowed that my family, can you see? Because of one person, they are condemning entire people. Oh, yes. When I was working in post office, that woman, what that woman did to me, I will never forget. And this is a Christian speaking, you know? And you now wonder why some people come to church, yet they don't see the power of God. Once Jesus. That ordinance has been cancelled. It no longer stands anymore. Oh, yes. Somebody shout a big amen. Big man. So this is what is still playing. Because it was before the death of Jesus Christ. So it is the Jews that had no dealing with the Samaritans. Not the Samaritans had no dealing with the Jews. So the Jewish people are, we are ready to deal with them. That's the, the, the woman was surprised when it was even Jesus himself. He said, you know, how can I give you a drink? Our people are inferior. You don't have, want to have anything to do with us. Why? 
a sentiment from the fathers is what is continued to this day. But now that Jesus has died, none of those things should stand anymore. Oh, yes. If whether you be Jews or Gentiles, Christ died for all. Yes. Especially when we have come to Jesus, we are born again. We are no longer, it doesn't matter where we come from. Once we are in Christ, he said, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creator. All things have passed away and all things have become new. Oh, yes. For he that is born of God overcometh the world. You might have come from Anambra state. You might have come from Imo state. You might have come from Bono state. You might have come from, from Yobe state. You might have come from Jigawa. You might have come from Brenin Kebi. You might have come from Benue. You might have come from Kogi. But once we are in Christ, we have become born as one. Yes. Preach. We have become the same family. Oh, yes. So it is better you deal with somebody according to individual on your personal experience and encounter. Not on the experience, not on the racial or whatever people had in the past against that community. If we want to look at Jesus, then our race will be very, very, you know. Do you know where Jesus came from? Eh? Do you know where Jesus came from? From the prostitute. You don't know? The prostitute, Rahab, the prostitute. Go and read your Bible. Yes, sir. So I'm sure if you are the one, you will be pointing at that. Ah, you know their family. Do you know what is going on in their family? You are looking for people in their old address when they have relocated to new home. Somebody shout a big amen. Amen. So quickly, I say the, I, I wrote this down. The racial prejudice and tension of the Jews towards the Samaritans is a historical reality. That's why I'm taking time to give you this. Jesus also referred to the Syrophoenician woman as a dog. You remember that? Even Jesus being Lord, our God. Remember, I mean, in today, it will be, it will be seen as abuse. This is even our Lord and Savior Jesus calling a human being a dog. Because he is the Lord but yet, walking on earth as a human. So there are every human reactions around him. Was he getting angry? Did he get angry? Yes, sir. Was he hungry? Yes, sir. So, because he got the human nature from his mother. So when his mother was training him, what did the mother say to him? What did Joseph say to him? Come, those people, they are no human beings. No, don't play. So Jesus, even in his ministry, he saw a, a Syrophoenician woman. He said to the woman, why should I give bread of little children to dog? Referring to a human being as a dog. Ah. You see, that thing was a reality. Until he himself died, himself went back to heaven and he cannot refer to any human being as dog anymore. Somebody clap for Jesus. That's our Lord. Can you be that? That's our Lord and Savior I'm talking about now. Matter of fact, should the Jew pass through a Samaritan neighborhood under some exigency, which they normally wouldn't in an ordinary day, as soon as they come out of that neighborhood, they must pull up their shoes and remove, then shake off the sand from their shoe. That's how bad the thing is. That's where the word Jesus told his disciples, he said, anywhere you enter, if they don't accept you, pull off your sandals, shake off the dust. Yes. As a matter of fact, if you pass through the borders or your leg touch the Samarian land, their soil, you are required by tradition, once you come out, you pull off your shoe, shake off the dust, and say, God forbid. I can't. You have to even wash your feet to an extent. Somebody shout amen. Amen. So, number seven, I, I, I call this strange bed fellows. Therefore, it became a strange and a questionable, and questionable how Jewish lepers can be found together with a Samaritan, a Samaritan leper. Because it, it, it doesn't work. Nine Jewish lepers, one Samaritan Jew. That's like strange bed fellows. They are never supposed to come together. So, what now happened? What do they have in common? Is it the leprosy that made them begin to 
you know, flow together. So A, there are situations in life many times beyond our control that can throw us into certain social or economical bracket that we never dreamed we would ever be found in. I hope you know that. Yes, sir. Talk to me. I don't like the way. I hope you know that. Yes, sir. You are too cold for my lightning this morning. Stand to your feet. Shake up yourself and shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't like that kind of lukewarmness. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I hope you know there are situations like that. Yes, sir. Sometimes, maybe if you are a parent, a Muslim said, don't have anything to do with a Christian. A Christian said, don't have anything to do with a Muslim. And now you send your children to school. They get to school and your children are in boarding house, in hostel. I hope you know that they can allocate the same room to them. Yes, sir. So there are circumstantial situations that will make such things happen. Yes. So understand that. Pain and trauma can pair people together. Maybe this person is rejected, this person is rejected. Two of them can become one. Pain and trauma can pair people together. It can bring together strange bedfellows. One event or misfortune can throw somebody with a privileged background into the company of people not in the social bracket. I hope you know that. Maybe somebody that came from a rich home, the father was rich. And all of a sudden, one governmental policy or attack or the other came and everything scattered. This, a child you will never see normally relating with other children. They start coming together. Again, divorce or divorce can throw a decent person to become numbered among divorcees. Very true. Have you ever had a misfortune that reduced you and brought you into the league and company of people you never ever thought you had been found in their company. People you, you, in your, you, you know that you will never be seen around such people. But one misfortune or the other, maybe something happened. You lost your father. You lost your mother. They threw you out of the house. And the only place you could find accommodation and solace is the person that smokes weed. Ah. We <laughs> That's the only person that says, okay, now come. Come and sleep. Oh, yeah. So in your face every day, they are wrapping it. Oh, yes. They are wrapping all those things that they wrap. They are smoking it, everything. And this is what you dreamt of that you will never be. Condition can make crawfish to bend. Yes, sir. Preach it. Again, I'm giving you points so you can understand what we're saying. For example, survivor in diaspora can throw you into a working group that ordinarily, back in your nation, you would never have been found with such people. There are people that were doing good business here that sold their property to travel abroad. Some of them are wiping the bomb bomb and the pool of people. Inva yes, it's true. Yes, sir. Invalid people. That's why some people abroad can, you are saying, bro, send me money now. He said, if you know, say, I the pack sheet. Uh, uh, ah. You ordinarily that when you see, when you see a baby pulls, you say, hmm, please give it to the mother. You, an adult like you. Oh. An adult like you. The sheet dry season sheet. And rainy season sheet. It is smell, mm. but man must survive. Cha. You wipe it. Cha. Wash the. <laughs> Can I hear them, somebody? Hey. Ordinarily, it's what that person, that graduate, will not do. That person that was working probably in a bank, working somewhere. 
If you have a good job that you are doing, you don't need to jabba. At all. I'm telling you. Yes, sir. If you have a good job. Now, can I say this to you? Look at me, everybody. We might have bad leaders. We might have bad governments in the past. Maybe all the years from the time of our independence. I might say, oh, since the time we gained democracy. We might have had bad leaders that mismanaged, that mismanaged our, our common wealth as a nation. We are so rich as a people. Yes. Now, listen, if you know the loot, the looting going on in this country, you'll be surprised that this country is living by the grace of God. Ah. Paddy, Paddy, they will just, they can sign a contract. Somebody, 100 billion. Ah. Another person is giving maybe what other people are supposed to, millions of people are supposed to do business and become, you know, become comfortable. It's given to one person. Ah. And that's the reason why politics has become so lucrative in Nigeria. Yes. That people have to borrow money from bank to do politics. Yes, sir. Because everybody goes there with the intention to loot, to steal. So if you know the looting going on, you will not leave it. But if, if in all this, one of the countries with the most opportunity is Nigeria. Do you know in abroad, you really, you must really work, you must really be graced, you must really uh, be talented, extraordinary to become millionaire. Are you, are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. But in Nigeria, somebody can sleep as a poor man and wake up the following week as a multi-millionaire. Yes, sir. I hope you know that. Yes, Papa. It doesn't happen there like that, too, for your information. Somebody shout amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So, I want to ask you, has life happened to you? And made you lose certain privileges and advantages you had before. Is there anyone who have had such experience? Yes, sir. Life happened to you. But leprosy dissolved racial prejudice among the ten lepers. Ten lepers. This leper, nine. They were already isolated. Remember. According to the Levitical orders, lepers are not permitted to come. You remember that the lepers are isolated in the Bible days? Yes, sir. So, because of that, you can imagine the pain. The, this leper says, my family abandoned me. The government says, we should stay in isolated camps. And so, the other one, they became strange bedfellows because all of them were going through the same pain. So, they were united in one cause. But I want to pray for somebody today. I just want you to say only amen. amen. Anything that will make you link up with people you are not supposed to link up. Jesus. It shall not stand and it shall it come to pass. Amen. Anything that will push you into life and situations. You are prayer that you will never be part of. Fire. In the name of Jesus, I break that thing from your life. Amen. Isaiah 7:7. Seven, seven, yes. It says, It shall not stand. Yes. Neither shall it come to pass. Yes. I pray and I prophesy. I receive. You will never come into such situation. Amen. I break you free from it. Amen. That day will never come. Amen. That moment will never come. Amen. That season will never come. Amen. Somebody shout yes. Yes. Preach. Let it be your prayer. Amen. I want you to lift up your hand and declare this. Say it shall not stand. It shall not stand. It shall not come to pass. It shall not come to pass. Amen. May it never happen that the only place you will get accommodation will be in the house of your enemy. Amen. May it never happen that the person that will give you opportunity will be your enemy. Amen. It shall not stand. Amen. Yes. 
May your enemy never be in charge of the position you are looking for. Amen. May your enemies never be in charge of what you are looking for. Amen. Obama, la, 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 ya, come on. Yes. May no situation push you into, do, into doing what you are not supposed to do. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Somebody shout a big amen. Amen. Yes. Be seated. Whatever would make you lose your, your advantage in life, privilege and lump you are in, into, a population bracket where you don't belong and never want to be numbered with, I declare today, I receive, may such satanically engineered condition be aborted. Wait, man. May it never take place in the name of Jesus. Amen. May your children never be numbered among drug addicts. Amen. May your children never be numbered among drug addicts. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Somebody shout yes. Yes. Preach. May your daughters never be numbered among prostitutes. Amen. I don't, I am saying something very serious. Yes, sir. May your daughters never be numbered among prostitutes. Wait, man. May your wife never be numbered among widows in a young age. Wait, man. I said, may your wife never be numbered among widows before she is 60 years old. Wait, man. You will never be widow. Amen. At least from 60, 70. Amen. You can't be widow at the age of 35. At all. At the age of 40, you are a widow. At all. I break it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yes. May your husband never be numbered among runaway husband or parents. Amen. If you are a woman, let your amen sound like thunder. Way back. Yes. There are fathers that are not part of their children's life. Yes, sir. May your husband never be numbered among on the way. Father. Way back. In the name of Jesus. Way back. May Ayada Balakata. Yes. May they not be caught out and be killed before they attack. Way back. The trouble that will reduce you and subject you to shame, oh. suffering, and make your children face life in bitter hardship. We overthrow it in the name of Jesus. Hey, man. We denounce it in the name of Jesus. Hey, man. We renounce and reject it in the name of Jesus. Hey, man. Yes. It is that bad. There are parents that know that their children are using their body to prostitute. Ah. And they are still calling them to bring money. Ah. Life has reduced them to that point. Ah. And when they will pray, they say, anything you are doing, let God prosper it. Ah. They think don't have name. They know what, they, they, what their daughter is doing. Ah. And what will push you as a young lady that your last resort is to use your body to trade. Sex, exchange for money. It will never come to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. No matter the temptation, I have bought it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Somebody shout a big amen. Amen. Is the message making sense to you now? Yes, Papa. Please be seated. There's no time. Few more minutes. Let's work this. The faith that stopped Jesus. Ten lepers, remember, by the village. Ten lepers by the village border. Seeing Jesus did something that arrested the attention of Jesus and unleashed divinity in him. Now, take note. By the Levitical laws, 
A leper was required to shout, unclean, unclean, unclean. The moment anyone approaches or walks by him. Yes, that's the law. Go and read your Bible, the Levitical laws. When a leper is somewhere and you are walking and the leper sees you, the leper is supposed to shout, unclean, 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 don't come close. Because as at that time, leprosy is seen as a disease that can be transferred from one person to the other. So, the law, their own way of prevention, like in this age, when there was COVID, people were wearing face masks, isolation and all of that. This one, there was no medical breakthrough, there was no science as at that time. No technology. So their own way, their technology was your mouth. Oh yeah, unclean, unclean, unclean. So you will shit back, you don't go near. That was how bad the situation is. Only you with your mouth is saying you are unclean. That was the law. That's, that's point one or A. B, I want you to see these things then I'll, I'll be done. Leprosy was not just debilitating medical condition at the time. It was also seen as a curse. Punishment for sin and anybody making contact with the leper was at a risk of contamination and the curse. So nobody wants to go near a leper. They live such lonely life. Thirdly, that's see. I wrote down here. Thus, it is required of a leper to shout and warn anyone coming close of his condition so they don't mistakenly contact them and become a curse too. So these ten lepers did not shout. They required unclean, unclean. Mm -mm. But what they shouted was, what did they shout? Master! What is the revelation of the master? They shouted in Luke 17 and verse 13, and they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, master, have mercy on us. Is that, is that what is written? Have mercy on us. Let's look at the revelation. When they shouted Jesus, that was understandable. But however, when they called him master, that was revelational. <laughs> when they called him Jesus, that was normal. But when they say master, that was revelation. That means you are master in all situations. You are master in all situations. You are the... Uh, yeah, ba -la -ba -da -ba. I thought I'm talking to somebody. You are master over everything. In the storm, you are master. In the bad season, you are master. When things are not working, you are master. Yes. When things should work, you are master. You are the master that can change bad to good. You are the master that can enter. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You yes. are the master of all things. Yes, sir. So the term master was revelational. Somebody shout, Amen. Amen. Master in the Greek word is translated commander. 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 It is the highest office in spiritual ranking reserved for the one that had the power to command that no one can disobey. You remember in Luke chapter 8, the centurion came to Jesus. He said, come and pray for my servant. He's sick and at the point of death. He sent the elders of the Jews. And when they, came, when they approached Jesus, Jesus said, go out, we come. On his way, he said, tell him. This is the revelation now. I am not worthy to have him come under my roof. But tell him to speak the word. And my servant shall be made whole. For me, I'm a commander in the military. He's a commander in the spiritual ranking. And it is the spiritual that controls the physical. Yes. In the commander, by our ranking and by our, by our military formation and system and patterns, I, I have men under me. And I'm under some people also. 
I say to one, go, and they go. I say to another, come, and they come. And I say to another, do this, and they do this. Because I am in charge of them. Jesus, you are the master and commander of all commander. Yes. Only speak the word. Ah, ah, yes, my Ayataba. Uh -huh. The commander will command your situation. Amen. I said the commander will command your situation. Amen. He will step into your situation. Amen. That devil is a liar. Yes. For the God who my serve is not a dead God. Uh -huh. He's the commander of all commander. He is yes. a mighty God. He is yes. the same yesterday. He is yes. the same today. He is yes. the same forever. He is yes. somebody stand up and shout, Jesus! Jesus! Yes. See that. When Jesus heard the leper shout, Master, they were operating by revelation. You know, you know what Jesus said, reply to the words of the centurion. He said, my, oh my, I've never seen anyone with such revelation about me. In other words, I've never seen or encountered a man with such revelation about who I am. And he said, it is done. The Bible said, at that same, same hour, the servant was made whole. Oh, yes. I declare by the same revelation of Jesus. I receive. By this same time tomorrow. Uh-huh. 10 minutes, 17 minutes after 10, your testimonies will manifest. Wait! Yeah. As you give thanks today, yes. by 17 after 10 tomorrow, yes. you shall be dancing your way into your testimony. Wait! Yeah. If you believe it, shout hallelujah! Hallelujah! Yes! When Jesus had Heard the leper shout, Master. They were operating by revelation. They did not see Jesus. They did not see him just as a man. They saw him as the master in charge of all situations. Yes, sir. They saw him in the spirit as master, the supreme commander. They knew that their condition required ah. one with authority to deal with it spiritually. Jesus is a commander. Yes, sir. Jesus is a commander. Yes, sir. Is a commander. Is the commander of this church. Yes, sir. Is the commander of my life. Yes. When Jesus becomes the commander of your life, uh -huh. there is nothing that will not be commanded in your favor. Oh, yes. Somebody shout, Jesus, my commander. Jesus, my commander. Yes. I am always waiting for the voice of the commander. Oh, yes. Okay. Ah. Jesus, my commander. Yes. Hmm. 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 Remember, you remember, you, you know Panam Pasi. You know Panam. Yes, sir. Ah, that guy is something else. He sang a song. He said, Master of the universe. Conqueror and king. That kind of song can only come by revelation. Yes, sir. Jesus said to Peter, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. There are, there are, there are realms you can't come into without revelation. Yes, sir. Don't follow carnally. Follow by spirit. Oh, yes. For the hour has come when those who worship him will do so in spirit and in truth. Oh, For yes. such the father seek it. The centurion operated at the same realm. He told Jesus not to bother coming. I, I told you now. I'm a man of authority. Kai. I say to one, go, he goes. I say to another one, come, he comes. Hmm. This commander, the centurion saw one with the power to command the spiritual world. Jesus commanded the sea. Kai. Why will I have Jesus and be afraid of any situation? He was sleeping. Deeply asleep. The Bible said a tempestuous wind, a storm arose that threatened the life of the people. The ship or the boat, the way was already sinking. And they tried their best. They were not having it. So Peter ran and said, Master, boat, 
his ship is sinking, or the ship is sinking. You are here sleeping. Rise up, do something. Just woke up. Mm. <clears throat> Peter, why are you disturbing me now? I was resting. You know, I've been walking all day. Oh. What's the problem? Master, look, see water. Water don't enter inside boats. Let me use pigeon. Oh. Imagine that scenario in pigeon. Master, see water, water, you they do sleep high. We won't die. Water won't buy all of us. You dare yeah, they do sleep high. So, what did they happen? Imagine Jesus said, Peter, and because of this small thing, now you they, now you they disturb me like this. Ah. Hey! Hey! Peter, show me where the thing that happened. See window now. You know they see sand everywhere. Cha. All those ships, all of them don't collapse. Our own go soon join them. Cha. Now Jesus said, Peter, what did they worry you now? Yeah. Now this morning make you the disturb my sleep. Or your wind, you don't know your mates. Mm. <laughs> hey. Ah. Hey. Ah. You don't know how they pass. You don't know how they pass here. Cha. You don't know so Gologbo pass or Gologbo. Ah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Sleep. Get out. They say, Sean, Baba, we don't know so you did there before. Hey. <laughs> we don't know. Hey. The people saw it. The Bible said everything stood still. Yes. And they said, What manner of a man is this? That even the storm. Yes. Of him. Yes. Preach. There is no storm in your life uh -huh. that cannot obey Jesus. Yes, sir. Whether it's the storm of sickness. Yes, sir. Whether it's the storm of barrenness. Yes, sir. Whether it's the storm of ancestral. Oh, yes. Whether it's the storm of sudden death. Oh, yes. Whether it's the storm of disappointment. Yes. Whether it's the storm of late marriage. Yes. Whether it's the storm of rising and falling. Yes. I command them in the name of Jesus. Uh -huh. Be still. Hey, man. Be still. Hey, man. Be still. Hey, man. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Preach. For the God I serve is not a dead man. Yes, sir. He's a mighty God. Oh, yes. He's the same yesterday. Oh, yes. He's the same today. Oh, yes. He's the same forever. Oh, yes. When he says yes, uh -huh. no man can say no. Oh, yes. When he opens your door, oh, yes. no man can shut your door. Oh, yes. When he lifts you up, uh -huh. no man can bring you down. Uh -huh. God is on your side. Oh, yes. Power is on your side. Oh, yes. Commander is on your side. Uh -huh. Power is on your side. Yes, sir. Deliverance is on your side. Yes, sir. Favor is on your side. Oh, yes. Increase is on your side. Oh, yes. Favor is on your side. Oh, yes. Come up and shout, yes. 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 My God, my God. Ah. Who is the commander? Jesus. Who is your commander? Jesus. Hey. The most excellency is Jesus. Yes. Ah, Babalo. Uh -huh. Swami Prana Kadamba. Yes. Jesus. Jesus. Oh, yes. Sit down. The commander went to the gravesite of Lazarus. And he commanded what was dead. The thing about this commander, he commands both the living and dead. Yes, sir. Invisible and invisible. Yes, sir. Even objects. Ah. Lazarus! They said, Master, what are you doing? He's dead. He don't die. Ah. And he's been buried for four days. And if you roll away the stone, it stinketh. Mm. That's to say, highly odoriferous. Ah. In other words, Master, everywhere go just the. Ta. 
Everywhere I go throw away. Ayabala Hayama. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and life. Ah. Hey. He beat the chest. Listen, Mary, Nami. I am the resurrection and life. Oh, yes. Even anyone that is, even if you are dead, anyone that believes in me will live again. Ah. Lazarus! Hey. Come forth! Yes! Mamonesh! The Bible said he that was dead came back to life. Look here, everybody. Look here. Look here. If you want to clap, do it well. Look here. Everything that died yes. in your hand. Ah. Whether your health. Yes. Whether any of your organs, yes. Whether your connections, my life. Whether your business, my life. Your promotion, your career, my life. I prophesy that we come alive. Yeah.